Hi, you are watching the video on how to use the Synoptophore. We will talk about what it is, how we set up a patient on the machine, how we test binocular single vision, interpreting the results and the test pros and cons. The Synoptophore, aka a major amblyoscope, is an instrument used in clinics to assess binocular single vision or BSV and gives information about the potential of one's BSV. The synoptophore is a haploscope, which means it allows us to present one image to one eye and another image to another eye simultaneously and monitor the patient's response. It is designed to optically induce infinity or distance assessment due to the eye pieces consisting of a plus 650 diopter lens. BSV is the ability of the eyes to work together to perceive a single common image. Due to the anatomical positioning of the two eyes, the images received by each eye differ slightly. It is up to the brain to merge these two images to produce one image. The synoptophore separately assesses each component of the three grades of BSV. The first grade is simultaneous perception, where two separate images from each eye are seen simultaneously. The second grade is fusion, the merging of two images from each eye into a single image. The final grade is stereopsis, the merging of two slightly dissimilar images from each eye to allow for the appreciation of depth. The grades of BSV are hierarchy, thus one grade cannot exist without the preceding grade. Simultaneous perception is needed for fusion and fusion is needed for stereopsis. The synoptophore also allows us to gain information about the size of a deviation, fusional amplitudes, the presence of a normal or abnormal retinal correspondence and also mapping the suppression scotoma if applicable. The synoptophore can be used for strabismic patients and for patients who are compliant and are able to understand and follow instructions. The results can be used to prescribe fusional vergence exercises as well as for the treatment of ARC. This is an image of the synoptophore taken from the clinician's point of view. The components of the synoptophore are as followed. Slide holder, elevation depression scales, torsion control, horizontal deviation control, tube lock, chin rest control, hand flashing switch, forehead rest, chin rest, vertical deviation control, horizontal vergence control, IPD adjuster, on and off switch. And here is the synoptophore in action. I've been waiting here for three hours. Thanks for being patient. I guess that's why you're called our patient. Come on in. Turn on the machine to illuminate the slides in the tubes. Switch all dials for both eyes to zero. Just give me a second while I wipe down the machine for you. Okay. I'll get you to pop your chin on the chin rest yep. for me. Yep. Forehead on the forehead rest. Ensure you have a stable view of the patient's eyes and that they are directly looking into the tubes. Adjust the table height to ensure that the patient is comfortable. Insert the simultaneous perception slides into the tubes. For the first eye measurement, align the clinician's body, the patient's corneal reflection and the white line together. When aligning the second eye, use the IPD controls to align the white line to the corneal reflection of the patient's second eye without moving your body, as this will affect the IPD measurement. Importantly, moving the IPD dial on either side of the machine causes both the left and the right tubes to move simultaneously. Simultaneous perception slides consist of a pair of different images. Here the line and the cage slides are used. Can you see a line? Yes. And can you see a cage? Yes. 
Is the lion in the cage? No. I'm just going to get you to grab this lever and I want you to put the lion in the cage for me. The patient is using the horizontal deviation control to move the lion into the cage. Mm -hmm. And can you just tell me when the lion is in the middle of the cage? The clinician is using the vertical deviation control to move the lion into the cage. There. For simultaneous perception to be present, the patient must indicate that they see both the lion and the cage at the same time. If one is missing, suppression is evident, where the eye with the missing image is suppressed. If the patient moves the lever from zero forwards to bring the lion into the cage, the patient has an ESO deviation, and if they move it backwards, they have an EXO deviation. If the patient has ARC, they would want the lion to project onto the pseudophobia instead of the true fovea. Subjectively, the patient will be locating either their true fovea or pseudophobia, depending if they have NRC or ARC, respectively. Objectively, a cover test using the synoptophore is performed and always determines where the true fovea of the patient lies. When the subjective angle does not equal the objective angle, ARC is present, and when the subjective angle equals the objective angle, NRC is present. The clinician moves the horizontal deviation control in front of the patient's deviating eye forward and then backward until the patient reports the lion being seen. The suppression scotoma is the area where the lion is not seen. Vertical suppression can also be assessed using the vertical dials. Fusion slides are a pair of slides with a common image with some distinct differences. How many rabbits can you see? One. Does it have a tail? Yes. And is it holding a bouquet of flowers? Yes. Just tell me when you can see two rabbits or the tail or the bouquet of flowers disappears. Yep. Yeah. And tell me when they've come back to single. There. The small variances between the slides are used to differentiate between a patient seeing one image as a result of sensory fusion or as a result of suppression. If fusion is achieved, the one image of the rabbit perceived by the patient will have both the tail and be holding the flowers. However, if one image is seen by the patient without one of these features, it is a result of suppression. The fusion assessment must start at the subjective angle of the patient because this ensures that the image is indeed on the true fovea of the patient or the pseudophobia if the patient has ARC. When the patient has broken fusion, the clinician moves the horizontal vergence controls to the opposite direction to see when fusion is recovered. Both fusional divergence and fusional convergence can be measured. However, divergence should be assessed first because convergence can underestimate divergence outcomes. Both vertical fusions using the vertical deviation controls and cyclofusion using the torsional control can also be assessed. The disparity in these bucket slides creates depth and stereopsis. Are you able to see the bucket? Yes. Is the base of the bucket facing towards me or towards you? Towards you. Towards you? What about now? Towards me. Yeah. Towards me. In stereopsis, the pair of images are the same, but there is some disparity which creates depth. Stereopsis is a gross stereo test and stereoacuity is not detected. It simply detects either the presence or absence of stereopsis. The buckets present to either be facing the patient or the clinician. If this is identified correctly by the patient, then stereopsis is present. Slides should be swapped in a random pattern to eliminate patient pattern prediction. Here's Holly's synoptophore recording. 
Polly's right eye was measured with her left eye fixing as a left tube was locked. Firstly, the horizontal subjective angle was measured and Holly moved the right horizontal deviation tube forward to the 6 degree mark, indicating that she has a 12 diopter right esotropia. Vertically, Holly indicated that the lion also needed to be moved upwards in order to be centred in the cage, which means that she has a right on left vertical deviation of 4 diopters. As there were no further eye movements in objective testing, it can be concluded that Holly has NRC. With respect to fusional ranges, Holly's fusional range is beyond the normal values. Holly's exceeding the normal fusion ranges can be expected due to convergence caused by a sense of nearness of the tubes. This is called proximal convergence. Despite the synoptophore simulating distance testing conditions, many patients exceed the normal fusion range at this distance due to this convergence. Holly's divergence recovery is slower than normal. This may signal that Holly may be losing some control of her binocular functions. Finally, Holly's stereopsis recording shows that stereopsis is present as she correctly differentiates between the inward and outward facing bucket slides. There are several advantages and disadvantages of the synoptophore. The synoptophore can measure all grades of BSV, it can measure suppression scotomas and torsion as well as being a non-invasive test. Patients also have the option to wear their own glasses during testing. Furthermore, you can put lenses within the lens holder if you want to manipulate accommodation. Disadvantages of the synoptophore. The synoptophore is not useful for an uncooperative child. It is unavailable in most clinics as it is expensive to purchase and it is a bulky piece of equipment that is often difficult to transport and manoeuvre. The synoptophore does not simulate what will be seen in the real world and since the eyes are constantly dissociating, the patient sees a moving image despite being stationary. The clinical conditions of testing induces proximal convergence, which can also contaminate the results. Thanks for watching our video.